Day 35. Being a creator in unity and relationship. In your relationship to God, who is your being, you can know relationship to everything, because this one relationship, you are in relationship with all. Thus, you need not become a world traveler, a joiner, an activist. You simply must become aware of all that you are. In this fullness of being, there is only love. In this fullness of being is found the means for the extension of love. In this fullness of being is found the cause for love. Means and end are one. Cause and effect the same. Fullness of being is thus the answer that you have sought and that you have always possessed. This fullness of being is different for each one of you because it is the cause and effect, the means and end of relationship. You have always existed in relationship with God, who is your being. But while it has been said that you are one in being and different in relationship, relationship is also God. God is the relationship of everything to everything. You have known yourself in relationship to yourself and others, without realizing that your being is God, that others are one with you, that God is the relationship of everything to to everything, or that you are the relationship of everything to God. Everything that is shared with God is shared with all because God is in relationship with everything. It has been said that when you reach awareness of the state of unity, you cannot share. This is why. So you might ask, was it once possible for you to be so unaware of your being that you are not sharing the relationship of everything with God? As long as you have been known that you are a self, as long as you have been aware of your own existence, you have been aware of God. Your awareness of self is God. God's awareness of you is self. This awareness exists in reciprocal relationship. How is knowing this going to be of practical benefit to you as you leave the mountaintop experience behind? This question has been asked in this way in order to remind you that while you will return to level ground, you will also retain the mountaintop experience. As was said before, the mountain came to you. You will thus always have the power to call upon the mountaintop experience and the view of wholeness we have achieved here. You will carry it within you, and when you feel not its power, you will be able to call it forth simply by asking for it to be so. What we speak of when speaking of your return to level ground is returning in a calm, even and equal manner to the most elemental and fundamental aspect of being human, while carrying within you a very elemental and fundamental idea, the idea that you are one in being and different in relationship, the idea that you return to your humanity with is an idea of oneness come to replace an idea of separation. An idea of sameness come to replace an idea of specialness. An idea of accomplishment and union here and now come to replace all ideas of life after death. These are ideas that take the way in which you once related to life and shift it entirely, because the way in which you relate to life is what has caused life to be as it has been. This shift will cause life to be different, or in other words, new. Ideas are neither learned nor accomplished, they simply are. They thus take no time to learn and require no steps to accomplishment. They can be lived immediately. No intermediary is needed. No tools are needed. All that is needed is that you carry them within you in a way we have previously spoken of caring. Carry them as a pregnant woman carries her child. Let them grow. Let them live and give them life. Giving ideas life is the role of creatorship. As a creator of life, new life, your first creation is, in a sense, creation or recreation of yourself. This is why you return to the ground level of humanity with the heights of divinity fresh in your mind and heart. This is why you return accepting of yourself rather than in a quest for self or with a desire to know a higher self. You return knowing you are one in being with your Creator and accepting your power to create. You return to create unity in relationship through unity and relationship. Only through unity and relationship are you able to be a Creator. A new world can be created only in this way. 
A new world can only be created. To proceed relying upon anything other than your power to create would be to only attempt to repair or replace. Unity is oneness of being. Relationship is different expressions of oneness of being. Being a creator must begin with full realization of oneness of being, which is unity, because without this full realization the potential exists for conditions other than love to exist. It should not take much consideration to know that to create from anything but love could have disastrous effects. This has been seen time and time again as you have created in separation. To create without the possibility of many expressions of creation would negate the purpose of creation, which is life in relationship, life in harmony, the experience and the expression of the one in and within the many. Creation has produced life through union and relationship. Humankind's unawareness of the union and relationship in which it exists has produced the idea of separation, while at the same time, humankind's desire for separation produced unawareness of union and relationship. Now, humankind's desire for union and relationship has led to awareness of union and relationship, while at the same time, union and relationship has led to this desire. Creation itself, which stands apart from particulars but united with wholeness, has led to this time of opposites becoming one in wholeness, becoming actual rather than probable. Wholeness is actual. All that is left to be created is awareness that this is so. If creation only occurs through unity and relationship, then the original creation must have occurred in this way. We will not return to previous discussions of original creation, but it must be thought of so that you understand creation. It has been said before that creation is continuous and ongoing. It is continuous and ongoing in everything that has been created, including you. This does not mean, however, that you have been a creator. Being a creator and creating anew is different than being affected by the ongoing nature of creation. Saying that you have been affected by creation, however, is also not the entire story, for as been said many times, means and end are one, cause and effect the same. You have been creating, but relating to creation and separation. You have seen yourself as separate from creation and separate from all others, thus what you have created has stood apart from wholeness. What is not created in unity could be said to have been made rather than created. The world as you know it is what you have made. Your life as you know it is what you have made. You will only fully realize the difference between what you have made and what you can create when you have accepted your power and begin to create in unity and relationship. Because you are a creator, you could not, however, not create. The word distinction between made and create thus does not fully do justice to the power you have always retained, but creating in separation is as different from creating in unity as has been your concept of God and man. Few of you have even thought of creating as God creates. You have barely been able to accept the thoughts of the miracle. And yet you are not being called upon to create as you have been, but to create as who you truly are being. You are called to nothing short of creating a new heaven and earth. This does not, however, entail specificity any more than the miracle does. It does not entail choice. It is a way of being. When you are fully aware of your oneness of being and begin to create a unity and relationship, you will do so by simply being who you are being, just as you have created during the time of your separation by being who you have thought yourself to be. Most of you are aware of having at least some role in the creation of your life, you may feel that at times God has intervened or that at times you have been a victim of fate, but you are also aware of the role that you have had in your own life primarily as you have reached maturity and begun to make choices. While it has just been said that you will create in unity and relationship much as you created during the separation, your creation in unity and relationship will be free of choice. 
Creation in unity and relationship is creation within the embrace of the all of all. How can you choose when what you create is everything?